primer on the business of screenwriting. We're going to go over agents, managers, producers, shopping agreements, option agreements, copyright, and more. Let's talk about copyright because all the screenwriters are so worried someone's going to steal their material. Stop worrying about that. You have bigger problems such as Will anyone actually read your screenplay? You just really don't have to worry about your screenplay being stolen. It's not like a car stereo where someone can sneak in and take your car stereo and then go over to a pawn shop and sell it. Movies are so public. People know they're not necessarily going to be able to get away with copyright. It's going to be known. It's cheaper for them to buy your script than to have to pay you damages after they make your movie. So just don't worry about that. And as far as copyright goes, you have copyright to your material the second you write it, regardless of whether or not you register it anywhere or not. But you just have to prove if there's ever an issue, what you created and when. There's an old wives tale that says that you put it in an envelope and you mail it to yourself and then you can prove what you wrote when. No, people can steam open envelopes and reseal them, so that's no. But could you possibly email it to yourself and that would be a poor man's copyright? It's possible, but you might as well, if you're really worried about it, register it with either the Writers Guild or the Library of Congress. I have links for both of those down below. What's the difference? The Writers Guild registration costs $20 and it lasts for five years and then you can renew. Well, if you don't want to have to think about it and you might forget to renew in five years, then that's going to be gone. You might be better off with just going straight to the Library of Congress. That's going to cost you $35 and that registration lasts forever. There's no expiration on the registration. So you've got bigger things to worry about than whether or not someone's going to steal your screenplay, but if you're really worried about it, register it with one of the links down below and forget about it. And like I mentioned in my how to write a screenplay video, do not put big old copyright 2017 on the title page or registration number blah, blah, blah on the title page. It's just unfriendly and it just says I'm a really paranoid writer who just might sue you. That's just what amateurs tend to do on their screenplays and it's not friendly and it does not give you any more copyright protection than you would otherwise have. So no copyright numbers on the title page. Now let's talk about what you cannot copyright. One is titles. That's actually more of a trademark. Copyright is more of a longer work. Something else you cannot copyright is an idea. So if your screenplay is about a guy who his wife was killed by a serial killer and he's a scientist and he wants to cure the world of serial killers. So the serial killer was caught and he was executed on death row and the scientist gets the serial killer's body and he thinks there's a certain something in the serial killer's brain that makes him a serial killer and he's going to extract that from the body. Then he's going to try and infect a test lab monkey with that essence. And if he can create a serial killer monkey, then he can figure out what causes serial killer itis and he can cure it. So he gets the essence from the body of the serial killer and he puts it in a banana that he's going to feed the monkey. But what he doesn't realize is he actually created a killer banana. <laughs> Then if in your screenplay, the killer banana somehow ends up at a zoo and starts to kill all the zoo animals. And then the Chiquita banana girl is investigating the case and tries to catch the killer banana. You have copyright for your execution of that idea. So that is your copyright. But just the idea of killer bananas. <laughs> Somebody else can make a completely different story about a banana tree that was infected by a virus and it turned them all into killer bananas and then somehow those bananas ended up on a plane and you have killer bananas on a plane, which the story is nothing like yours, but just the concept of killer bananas is the same. You can't claim a copyright problem. Ideas you cannot copyright. Only the execution of ideas is something you can copyright. So you should worry more about someone stealing your idea than your screenplay. But you shouldn't worry about any of this at all because you need to get your work out there to get it sold. And if you just want to hold on to it because you're so scared someone's going to steal it, it's not going to get made. You got to let it go. And you just have to trust the universe. It'll all be okay. Now, agents and managers. First question, do you need an agent or a manager or both? 
Nowadays, the industry has really changed and there's a lot more direct access to producers. And even if you do have an agent or a manager, I know so many people who got their movies made because somebody knew somebody who knew somebody or they met someone in Starbucks. But it is helpful to have more people on your team. So let's talk agents and managers. What is the difference? Agents have to be licensed. That's a very regulated industry. So they have certain limitations, but they can also do some things that managers can't. Agents can send your material to producers. They can also negotiate your deal if there is a sale. But what they can't do is they cannot be producers on your projects and they can't take any more than 10%. Managers can also send out your material. They cannot negotiate deals. Only agents can negotiate deals. They can also be producers on your project and they can take anywhere from 10 to 15% or more because they are not regulated. There are some other differences too, like managers might tend to be a little more hands-on and help you develop material. So there are a lot of managers who used to be agents and they felt like they were just too much of a salesman and didn't actually get to be creative. And so they like being a manager better because they can actually work with ideas. They're a little more hands-on with like developing the material. The agent might give you some notes, but they're really more for just selling the script. So a manager might help you in the very beginning deciding what idea you should write, helping you write it, working through rewrites, that kind of thing. And then it could be good for you that your manager is also a producer because then they can kind of skip one step and not have to get a producer and go straight to financiers and studios. But the downside is if they don't have that much cachet and they aren't really a benefit to the project as a producer and they actually have to go out and find another producer that has more cachet that can actually make things happen, sometimes they could be like a dead weight to the project because if you're a producer, if someone sends you this screenplay and they want to see if you can be a producer, you would be the only producer on this project. But then they get another project where you wouldn't be the only producer. You would have to share producing credits with someone else. If you're going to do all the work, you might as well get 100% of the producing fees. So if your producer doesn't necessarily help you get your project set up when they're attached as a producer, sometimes that's a problem. And that's also an issue you might have to talk to your manager about is how do we decide when you are attached as a producer to my projects and when you're not. Now let's talk about producers. If you do have an agent and manager and maybe your manager isn't attached as producers, so they're just sending your script out to producers, that's called sending your script out wide. And if you have a screenplay that you wrote, you were not hired to write it, it's your idea, that's called a spec script because you wrote it on speculation. So they're gonna send your script out wide to a whole bunch of different producers and then the producers who are interested in it will usually divide up the territories. So some of them will take these studios, they're gonna take it to, and these other producers will take it to some other studios. And that's all usually done kind of just on verbal agreement, handshake deals when you have an agent or manager. But let's say you don't have an agent or manager and you watched my video, how to sell a screenplay, and you got in contact with a couple different producers. You tell people about your screenplay, killer bananas. And a couple producers contact you and say, I'm interested, send me your script. Here's one of the first things you might encounter if you don't have an agent or manager, and that is a release form. And I wanna warn you about this, not because it's bad, but because not all producers will want it. So let's say three producers contact you and say, I'm interested, but one of them says, I need you to sign a release form before I read it. And you might think, wait a second, what's wrong with this producer that they want me to sign this form? They're shady. No, a lot of these companies do have policies policies that they just won't read material without a release form if it's not coming from an agent or a manager or an attorney. And that is just to cover themselves because there are a lot of crazy people out there. And if you have not been vetted by an agent or a manager, they don't know if you're crazy. Now these release forms do look absolutely horrendous because they're written in all this legalese and it's all this stuff about you know, you aren't gonna sue us. And if you do have a problem, you agree to mediation and you won't go to court. They do sound really awful and they sound like you're signing away the rights to your screenplay. If it's a legitimate production company, you probably have nothing to worry about. I've signed some of them. If it's a much lesser known production company or a new production company and there's something in it you don't like, then don't sign it. So it's up to you whether or not you sign the release form. If it's a legit company, you're probably fine. So then all these producers read your screenplay. The first thing to know is that silence is a no. <laughs> Some companies will get back to you and say, hey, we read your material, it's just not for us. But a lot of the times you'll just get silence. And one of the reasons is for that, they're just so busy that to sit there and communicate back and say, hey, this wasn't for us is a lot of time. 
And I also think it has a lot to do with the same reason that women on Match.com do not respond to every guy who sends a little wink wink hi, want to go out, because even though men say it's rude to just ignore people and say nothing, there's enough crazies out there who if you say thanks but no thanks will just go nuts like how dare you and who are you and meh, meh, meh. So just understand usually silence is a no, but if you're worried that they maybe forgot about you or they didn't read your script in like a month, a month and a half, if you want to just send an email saying, hey, just wondering if you had a chance to read my script, thanks. That's okay, but don't send it again and again and you'll more than likely get a response back very very quickly, yes we did, it's just not for us. So for the most part, silence is a no. Now let's say they love it. They say killer bananas is just what we were looking for. It's fantastic. We think the Chiquita banana girl who chases the killer banana to stop him is an amazing role for an A-list actress. <laughs> and they love it. Are they going to buy it? Kind of no, not really. Producers don't buy scripts. The closest thing to that would be they might option it. Here are the possibilities. They could either shop it with a verbal agreement with you. They could have you sign a producer attachment agreement or a shopping agreement or they could option the screenplay. First, let's talk about options because screenwriters tend to be so into options and they want an option and option is what they want. Like, yeah, I want to option it. In this particular case, when you're dealing with a producer, you actually probably don't want to go the option route if you can avoid it. Why? Because there's really not much development money in Hollywood anymore. So at the very most, you might get one or two grand in option money. But here's the problem. What an option is, is they are buying the the option to purchase your screenplay at a particular price within a particular time frame. It's just like a stock option, which means when you come up with this option agreement, you have to negotiate all the intricacies of the contract, the purchase price, how much you're going to get paid for rewrites, the deals, the whole shebang. Well, when you don't know who's going to eventually buy this and how big it's going to be, you might not want to do maybe a low ball option agreement because what if they go set it up with Sony or DreamWorks and now it's a big movie and you signed an option agreement thinking, oh, maybe they can't do much. Maybe it'll just be here. Or this deal could be so complicated complicated that it isn't something that you can handle. You'll have to actually go hire an attorney to deal with it, which could easily cost you more than how much you're getting from the option agreement and just take a ton of time. And it's really cart horse when all they really want as the producer is to be attached as the producer. And there's going to be someone else who's actually buying the screenplay. You don't really need to do this at this time. So it can actually cost you money to option a script to a producer when you have to pay a lawyer to look over the option agreement that you'll get next to no money for. You're much better off going with a producer attachment agreement. And what that is, is going to be a very simple one page form that just says for this particular time frame, this producer is attached to the material. So that should satisfy the needs of the producer because they just want to make sure they won't be cut out of the deal. That if they go set it up somewhere, you won't make a deal. And then whoever buys it doesn't say, oh, we don't want you as a producer. We want someone else. And then they get nothing. They want to make sure they are in the deal kind of hard locked in. So producer attachment should satisfy what the producer needs and you don't have to go through this big old option agreement contract that is just a headache. Sometimes shopping agreements and attachment agreements can also be shorter time periods and that could also benefit you. Then producers don't have the money to make movies. They go find the money. They go find the financiers or the studios. And then it's going to be the financier or the studio that will then make the deal with you. And how much do you make as the screenwriter? The general rule of thumb is the screenplay is going to be two to 3% of the budget. There you go. Some business basics to know as you navigate Hollywood. I hope this video helped you. If it did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because that helps my wee little tiny channel. Don't forget to subscribe because more videos are coming and I will talk to you later.